the title of the presentation is almost is based on the effect of uh, additions of chromium, manganese, and titanium and aluminum based alloy. Those aluminum based alloys are the interest of one of a well known uh, auto car industry here in the country and internationally. Also, they are well known in, in uh, all over the place. Um, why aluminium? Because, well, basically aluminium is, uh, the consumption of aluminium is, is widely known. China basically contributes with the, with the, is the top consumption of aluminium with 12,000 tons of aluminium followed by India and the United States. So that, um, this basically comes with the idea of studying aluminium, but in a different part of, of the phase diagram. Um, and why aluminum as well? Because, well, basically this is the phase diagram. We're working in this part of the phase diagram. This is a hyperutectic alloy. This is the percentage of silicon. One of the main advantages of, of aluminum silicon hyperutectic alloys is basically the low density, high specific strength, and the wear resistance. This is basically the part of, the, of a car where the aluminum is employed and this is the process where they came from. Um, you could say, well, well, we got silicon. Silicon is an important element which drops the viscosity of aluminum. So if you're going to cast aluminum in some very narrow parts of a mold, you can fill them up completely uh, by adding silicon. Silicon, as I said, drops the viscosity uh, drastically. Uh, but why? Because well, basically the way they, the, the study of this kind of material of alloy with these micro additions, but the idea is just to study the effect of the alloy element like manganese, chromium, and titanium. Why manganese and chromium? Because they use manganese is similar to iron. This is also considered an impurity similar to, curious, to, to chromium. And titanium, we are titanium because it's well known as a, a screen refiner. The second idea is to study also the effect of the solidification process. Basically, we use three, three kinds of solidification processes in our study. The main was basically the ascas solidification on top of the, the copper plate. And the second was a one is called uh, suction casting. And the third is a well-known uh, rapid solidification field it's called uh, melt spinner. Um, Basically, the idea of forming intermetallic phases into a microstructure in aluminium is they, they provide high strength of the alloy. However, you can see here in this part, let me put the pointer or the pen, pen here. They are quite sharp in this space. They are quite sharp and they are also called stress concentration. They are not good for the mechanical properties. So the idea is just to modify the intermetallic morphology here in order to enhance the mechanical strength and also use a different process that hasn't been reported before, which is a suction casting process in non or, or another non-equilibrium process in this kind of alloys. Whereas the main idea is just to change, to refine the microstructure and also to modify the, the intermetallic in this particular case, instead of having a needle-shaped structure, we aim to have an, uh, a rounded or spherical shape in metallic. Also is to promote the formation of non-equilibrium phases, which could also influence the mechanical properties of the alloy. These are the shape of the samples we're producing by suction casting. This is the copper mole, and this is the alloy we've been producing by suction casting. The experimental is quite simple in this case with the technology. Basically, we start with uh, chemical elements with 99.9%. In industry, the company that's, that's funding this research uses 99.8, but 99.9, it gives you a better result, less, less more, more purity of alloys. You, you have a better control of the process. Um, we use an arc melter. This is the arc melter here. We got a titanium ingot. Well, we use the titanium ingot because we use vacuum and then we fill with argon and we melt the titanium first as a, as a getter. Basically, there is oxygen remaining here. It is going into solution with titanium. This is our sample here, the copper plate and the titanium electrode. Basically, this is, an arc, this is a small one. This is the builder. This, I got three arc melters. This is the smallest one. 
uh, you can produce 10, 15 milligrams of sample here. The other one is 50, and the, the biggest is about 200 grams of sample. For research, is more than enough, depending on the, 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 how expensive is the, the sample you use, you match. The equipment is quite expensive, like palladium uh, or gold and silver. We use the little one. And for medium, about titanium and other kind of alloys, we use the medium. The next, uh, we use X ray diffraction for calculating the or determining the phases and then use SEM and TEM. In this talk, uh, obviously, in 25 minutes, it's going to be very impossible. It's going to be impossible to present all the results. I'm going to concentrate only in SEM. And the next, I'm going to show you the resultant of the of the structural parameters that we modify in terms of the mechanical properties. We're going to report only the micro hardness and the compression. We did a bit of tensile uh, tests, but now I'm not going to present all the results here. Uh, this is the micro hardness, and that's the for the compression. We're going to start talk about the master alloy systems. As you can see here, we're using quite a lot of silicon in the alloy and 5% of iron. Why 5% of iron? Because as I said before, it's considered an impurity in this kind of alloys, and we wanted to move to the very limit, to the upper limit of the system. If we studied this one, and we could improve the mechanical property of this, if we are less iron, or we're expecting to have better properties of this material. Okay, we start with the XRD analysis, and here this is the ingot as cast, as we call it, and this is a two millimeter suction cast rod. As you can see here, as the solidification rate increases, there are some phases that tend to or basically disappear. We call these phases, this is a silicon, eutectic silicon, and some aluminum alpha. This is for the ribbons. Ribbons, obviously, they are produced by melt spinner, and the cooling rate of my melt spinner is about 1 million Kelvin per second. Here, we're receiving, or we are cooling around 10,000, well, 1,000 Kelvin per second, which is, you can get that cooling rate in, in, in industry, basically. That's why we're using this method. Here, we've got some, this is the classic intermetallic for this alloy. This is your tactic in this alloy. And this is on silicon primary, the primary silicon, which also embrittles the alloy. We're expecting to modify this silicon in the microstructure in order to reduce, well, to reduce this sort of morphology and you know, to enhance the mechanical properties. Once we got this one, this is for suction casting. This is my, this, it's basically for suction casting, and we modify the intermetallic. You see, you check the check the, the size. You see, this is much thicker, which is this becomes thinner and sharper at the end, which is not that good in this particular case. Now let's move to the ingot. This is the ingot we got. This we're gonna call this intermetallic with silicon. This is the the eutectic with the phase, the primary phase, and here we got small part of this. Um, primary silicon. Then we move to the suction cast, which is another method we already use. And in this particular case, we got that the intermetallic, in this case, is become thinner, as I already say. However, if we move to the four millimeter rod, it's quite similar to the previous one. So we can see now that the solidification process, just with the solidification process, process sorry, we can modify the microstructure of the as cast alloy and the pasture alloy. And this uh, image here is, uh, we produce a image with, uh, with Mel Spinner, this ribbon. As you can see here, the difference is quite, diff is, 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 is quite significant. Here we got needle shape structure, and here we got a circular. Uh, basically, we spherizing the intermetallic, very, very small spherical intermetallics. This is around 2,200 2, nanometers, and the intermetallics around, let's say, around 50 nanometers, which gives a good opportunity of studying this kind of materials with this, this sort of this kind of uh, uh, production process. Um, now, 
let's move to the mechanical properties. In terms of the mechanical properties of the ingot, you can see here we got 106. However, if we increase the solidification rate with suction casting, we moved about 50% difference above. However, for the metal spinner, is four times the difference of the master alloy, which is quite interesting. We don't have stress concentrations here. We do have stress concentrations in these alloys. Okay, for the master alloys here, we got uh, one of the most important parameters here is basically the elongations and the UCS, which is, which is the ultimate compress compressive strength. Here, the compression strength for the ingot is about 395 with a 90.5 elongation. However, if we apply the rapid solidification in terms of the suction casting, we increase the UCS, but drop slightly. Well, not slightly, about we drop the, the elongation or the plastic deformation to down to 2.4%. And that's the image. However, for the four millimeters diameter, we increase the plastic deformation 20%. So it's about with almost double, or basically we double the, the elongation while also doubling um, the, uh, the UCS. We can see here the strain strain curve. And here is basic where the material fractures. Okay, now if we add chromium to this system, in terms of chromium, it's quite similar with the master alloys. As we increase the solidification rate, the some phases drops in the intensity. One of the advantages of the solidification is that the, the rapid solidification is that it opens the solubility in the alloy. So we can add more atoms to the sol solvent without changing the, the crystalline structure. And that's one of the main advantage of the rapid solidification. As you can see here, some of the atoms are moving into another crystalline structure. And this is 1% of chromium. 1% of chromium we, we found, we, we got four phases. We think, we found in the literature that this phase is called, is a quasi-crystal. We are not yet, we're still investigating this phase, but we're gonna call it just intermetallic with chromium. This one, as this, uh, we call them intermetallic with silicon. This is with 3% chromium with the ingot and growth, and we still we found the same, basically the same phases, but a more refined microstructure as we can see here in these images. This is for the ingot, and here we got still we got a uh, silicon, primary silicon, which I said, already said, in brittle alloy, together with the intermetallic with silicon, and with this, uh, um, as I said before, the quasi-crystalline but intermetallic with chromium. And they start form these sort of rosettes, these very nice form of rosettes. As we increase the amount of chromium from these, it moves to this shape which is basically, I've never seen this before in the literature. They are quite uh, neutral for an aluminum alloy. Um, and this one, when we move to 5% chromium, this rosette, so this kind of structure disappears completely to form a, what we call a dendrite structure, dendritic structure, basically. And now the most important parameter here, or aspect here is that this phase completely disappears. If we increase the 5% of chromium, that phase, which comes from the master alloy, completely disappeared. And only we observe this uh, intermetallic with chromium together with the primary silicon that is still around there and the eutectic uh, arrangement, basically. This is the two millimeter roll with 1% one of chromium. As you can see here, we start forming this arrangement. It's quite different from the previous one and we still got the intermetallic with silicon. However, if we add more chromium, as I already said, now this sort of structure, which is quite sharp, becomes in this shape, which is basically dendrite structure. Actually, we use this to calculate the cooling rate of the system using this DAS model. Um, here, if we increase it to the chromium, obviously we're gonna find a more phase related to the intermetallic with chromium together with the eutectic. And uh, you can see here how it forms very nicely and very homogeneously distributed along the microstructure. This is for the, um, um, this is the compression strength. And you can see, this is the cooling rate, sorry. 
this is the cooling rate. The cooling rate you can see here that is for the ingot. This is more or less one order of magnitude in terms of the ingot and the road. Uh, in terms of industry, this is not quite. This is not that far from what they get in industry. Uh, but in case of the metal spinner, it is considerable. You can get that cooling rate in industry for metal spinner. The hardness, as you can see in this image, for the excuse me, the sir. Roughness. Yes. Uh, sir, I think uh, I cannot hear you. Can you please uh, once more mute and unmute your mic? I think. Okay, mute and mute. Okay. Okay. Now. okay. That's fine. Okay. 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 Please. Yeah. Please continue. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Well, that's um, that's the micro hardness of the alloy. Uh, it does increase as we increase also the amount of chromium. However, for this uh, mass, for the basically the master alloy, you can see an abrupt increase of the micro hardness. I think it was related to the formation of those intermetallics that uh, we showed in the previous microstructure. That's for the ingot. You see the elongation of the ingot. This is for the master alloy here, for the ingot. The master alloy, the elongation is about 9.5. And the gel strength of the UCS is three, yes, as we said before, is 395. However, if we increase the amount of, of chromium, we don't see any, any difference at all with the ingot. That's why we move to another process, which is what we reported the suction cast process. And with the suction cast process, we notice that the UCS also increased for the master alloy, but for, for 1% of chromium here, so we got 100, more than 100 megapascals. And also for this one, which is quite similar to the first, we almost have the same elastic or plastic deformation. So the addition of 3% of chromium in the suction cast did improve the mechanical properties and it was associated to the change in the microstructure, microstructure of the alloy. Okay, that's a summary in terms of chromium, as I already say, we've, we think this is the best property and the same the amount. So we are 3% of chromium with the suction cast technique. We're gonna have a, we almost triple the yellow strength, the, double the UCS and, and kept a, the elongation percentage. And the next uh, I'm gonna present is the manganese effect in uh, on the master alloy system. Uh, for the manganese, it was slightly different as the manganese also is considered impurity. We add some manganese, uh, we want um, one, three or 5%. We can see in terms of manganese, we also got three, four uh, phases. The one that we found in the master alloy initially, and this is the second an intermetallic where, that we're gonna call the intermetallic with manganese. As we increase the cooling rate, we also found that low angles, low angles, XRD angles, they disappear, they basically disappear the, the phase that came from the master alloy. And also it drops the size of the intensity of the XRD analysis. This is for 1%. This is a 3% manganese. This is the road and the ingot. As you can see it's dropping basically the intensity. And this is for 5% of road. This, I love this image. This is basically for a textbook. Here you can find the eutectic, the growth of the eutectic. You can see the aluminum phase, which is, this is the clear one. And the, and the eutectic silicon, which is a darker one, surrounded by the intermetallic. This is the, this intermetallic came from the master alloy, and now with 1% of manganese, we start forming in this part the intermetallic with manganese. You can see we have higher magnifications, the formation of the eutectic. Very clear that when I show this, uh, I showed this image to my students last week. If basically they find out how the, the tactic grows actually. Now, if we move to the sol to suction cast, basic, basically this is convention cast, conventional casting, and this is a suction cast, you can see that the microstructure completely changed. We still got some acicular structure, but more refined and homogeneously distributed. Okay. 
And this, when we add 4% of road, we still got some. Increase the amount of manganese, the intermetallic manganese, we still got the same, the same problem with, um, with the acicular structure. This is with 3% of manganese in terms of the ingot. However, if we move to the road, we can see these very plaques, large plaques, become slightly thinner, but sharper but sharper, but move in different directions. So we think that might stop the movement of the locations. So improving in one way or another, the, or keeping the elastic or the plastic deformation of the alloy. This is a four, two, four, two millimeters road. And this is the four millimeters road. Here, we got something that's also called a rosette. That's basically a new microstructure for these kind of alloys produced by rapid solidification. Here we got the ingot. Okay, with the ingot, and here we got the five millimeters with with um, five percent uh, manganese in a rod. We still got the. Uh, I mean, I was forgetting this. This sort of a structure, uh, we call it a uh, fractured dot bond. We didn't know it was the first time we saw this microstructure report in the literature. We actually, we reported this in alloys and compounds, general alloys and compounds, but we call it a fractured dot bonds. Now we got the hypothesis that basically th these are the dendrite growth. So we could, this dendrite is how they look, the second dendrite arm spacing. So basically it's how they grow. Uh, when we cut the sample for the metallographical uh, metallography preparation. When we add the five, this is a, a five um, percent manganese. And when we move to rapid solidification times suction cast, this microstructure, basically this microstructure, which is quite thick, becomes very, very thin. You can see in this case, here is about 20 microns, uh, 50 microns, and this is 20 microns, quite thin, which is kind of about one micron thin, and distributed very nicely in the microstructure. Uh, the amount of the first intermetallic that came from the from the uh, from the master alloy disappeared, and it gave way to this new intermetallic formation. And this is the four four millimeter rod which is quite similar to the two millimeter rod. Basically we're using the same process, they made the same the same suction casting process, but we're increasing the size, the die, the size of the die. Basically they are this, this is a summary. It's not surprising that the two millimeter rod uh, has or show the highest uh, uh, harms of the alloys produced by if, with manganese why? Because it's got more refined structure. Is uh, the structure uh, along the the road was quite homogeneous. That's why it gave us this micro hardness. However, for the the compression test, we can see here that only for the ingot, no suction cast the ingot. You can see here one percent of manganese. It gave us nine percent of elongation, while all more or less keeping the same UCS. Well, it's not bad. Uh, basically, we kept the same as the ingot, so it's not good for the company. They were they were quite interesting with this one with the ingot. However, if we move to the road. We can see here that the UCS increase for this. You can see, have a look at this, 110 with the elongation of 3.6, which is is quite high, which is much much higher than the one for the road for the master alloy. And the plastic deformation with 1% of manganese moves to 5.8, which doubles the origin of one, which was quite interesting. Was This was very interesting result. This is four millimeter road. And the four millimeter road, it was basically one of the best. Uh, you can see here 20% percent of elongation. However, and uh, when we add the manganese in the four millimeters, it drops. It drops the elongation. Also, the UCS tend to 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 decrease, and and that was associated to the formation of those needles that the manganese produced together with intermetallic and those sharp uh, needles uh, that basically were stress concentrations of the sample. 
um, these are the, the summary of the manganese for the ingots and the suction cuts rust, rods for, for this system. And now we're moving to titanium, as I already said in my introduction, that titanium is a well-known grain refinement. So we thought that uh, by adding titanium to the alloy, we were going to get some considered grain refinement in this, in this system. So we moved to titanium. Unfortunately, for the pandemic, for the COVID-19, we only produce ingots and, and ribbons. So basically, my student now is working in such a kind of rust. Uh, this, these results are now we're working on them, but they're quite exciting what we're getting so far. Um, and you can see here for the ingots, <clears throat> this is a, for one, 1%. 3% and 5% of the tenure now to the alloy. And you can see the difference. We're forming basically the same in terms of ingot. Uh, some peaks that tend to drop, but basically we're forming the same, the same structure. We didn't know why at this point. Okay, now we move to the ribbons and we, we move to the ribbons. Most of the lost peaks already seen here, uh, they disappear. What, well, and here we only found uh, aluminum and the intermetallic, which is quite stable. That's why we found it here. Although it's one small peak, but it concise. It basically matches these in, at these angles. Well, that's why we thought it was the same, the same intermetallic of other alloy that I've already shown. This is the aluminum silicate for titanium. We add 1% of titanium to the ingot. We thought that only with 1% of titanium, the microstructure was going to be uh, different, but no. It was basically the same as we found it with the master alloy. However, we had 3% of titanium for the ingot, standard solidification, okay. Model is the same. What we found is those needles with the titanium silicon intermetallic with the basic intermetallic we found here. We were a bit disappointed at this point with this, with addition of titanium. However, we'd get, we moved to the 5% and we found even sharper. So it wasn't that good at this point. And then we moved to rapid solidification with ribbons. And all of those, this is basically for the ribbon. Okay. And this is for 1% of the titanium. You can see the difference. This is the acicular, a circular or needle shaped structure of the, this one, basically. This, this structure, basically, you can see the difference here. And now they are more and more refined. And we start finding this small spherical intermetallics around 50 20 nanometers 20 nanometers intermetallics so basically with this model spinner we start to basically we we change the microstructure considerably by moving from one solidification process to another one here is one three percent titanium now i can hardly see any spheric acicular structure unless it is here it's around 100, 100 nanometers. And now if we move to 5% titanium, that completely disappear. I can't see anything. Everything is spherical. And that was one of the main uh, contributions to this research, to the interest of the company and working with these aluminum and titanium additions. If we checked the micro harness, that was quite interesting. We, we, we can see this is for the master alloy for the ribbons. This is 1%, it drops down with 3%. So why? You saw the microstructure. It was quite a circular. It, was, it, has, it, had, it has a lot of needle-shaped structure, lots of stress concentrations. However, if we move to 5% with the same process, the stress concentration disappeared completely. It's a more homogeneous structure and the, and the micro harness was the highest for now you can say, well, you're gonna produce a ribbon shaped structure of ribbon, ribbons, but for engineering purposes, they are not that good. So we limited the application of ribbons. So basically we designed this process, we patented this process, and uh, we use the metal spinner, we got the ribbons here, we crushed the ribbons, produce these this, uh, uh, samples, fill the dye, we produce a compacted, uh, material. This is a compact samples, and then we apply severe plastic deformation to those ribbons in order to keep the same microstructure and basically at room temperature. We didn't apply any temperature at all. 
in this. So we wanted to keep the same microstructure as it came up from the milk spinner. What we got here, this is a compacted sample, you see, and that's the boundary of the ribbons. Quite clear, the boundary of the ribbons. So this is the compacted sample for milk spinner at 20 meters per second. And this, I removed this from the from the last bit of the extrusion process. You can see this was the, 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 the metallic luster. So it means that the, the, the applied force over the dye of the extrusion, the extruded dye is, is working. That's, this, this is one of the samples. And then I cut the sample in half to analyze how the ribbons were compacted and making just one, one material. This is for the compacted sample. You can see the difference and the boundaries between the ribbons. But after in this part where we got the sample extruded, there's no boundary at all. You can see any boundaries. So we consider this as a monolithic material. So in conclusion, so for the aluminum 20 silicon iron file system, the best mechanical properties were observed for the four millimeters. For the chromium, we observe that the four, three, four, for the 3% chromium, uh, the two millimeter road diameter enhanced mechanical properties. Uh, and then in terms of the manganese, the alloy with 3% uh, manganese manufactured for suction casting showed the best mechanical properties for all the alloys. And the um, finally for titanium, uh, with addition of 5% of titanium, the titanium has already of you saw in the previous um, um, uh, images, um, with 5%, all the circular faces, all the circular structure disappear basically and improve the mechanical property in terms of hardness. Hardness, why? Because it's the only property we got so far. Um, we're working on the suction cast sample for this one and we're hoping to have good results in the near future. And that's basically everything I want to say or to present in that this point. Thank you very much for being here.